Hello viewers. I want to present to you another device. Well, sort of. I've already made a video on this device. But it was done without a tripod. Moving my camera, which was my smartphone, about. And I figured a machine as special as this deserves another presentation done more properly with a tripod and so forth. So, here goes. This is a 1940s era vacuum tube, obviously. Military grade wire recorder. Recorder reproducer unit model RD-11B slash GNQ-1 Serial number C297 This device was manufactured in 1948 although I have reason to believe that this particular model had been in production for a number of years and I imagine this particular model also would have been made during earlier in the 1940s as well during World War II. I also found online that there were smaller recording only units that used the same kind of wire cartridge that this one used that was used aboard airplanes. But this of course is a full recording and playback device. It precedes the invention of the cassette format by quite a few years, but uses a cartridge-based system. So here is a front control panel. You can see the model number displayed and so forth. It has a speaker. Now, when I made the previous video of this, the speaker was non-functional and I had to hook up an external speaker. I have managed to repair the original speaker. It turned out that one of the bonding wires, voice coil wires, um, this, where, right where that bonding wire was, the speaker had been punctured and the bonding wire had broken. So I, I re-soldered that little voice coil wire and, um, or I, 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 jumped, I bridged the connection with a little piece of wire and was able to re-solder to complete the circuit again and put a lot of hot glue over that and also glued the dust cap back on which had come off and have and have made the speaker function again. It's an old Jensen 5 inch driver and it was on the back of that speaker where it mentioned the date of 1948 and of course it has the various controls too. An interesting thing to note is this machine does not erase during recording if you want to erase, you have to run it in re erase mode, which will rewind the wire whilst erasing. Then after you erased, then you can record. If it hasn't been blank already. The strange PL68 size jack is used for both dynamic and carbon microphones. I have acquired one such jack, but because I don't have an official workbench set up yet, the jack resides in a drawer in one of my con component organizers, and said component organizer is in a kind of hard to get area right now, so still for the time being I'm just going to use alligator clip leads to hook up a mic. Radio or line input is a standard quarter inch jack. So are the phone outputs jack. Power, warning, and motor. Power light's burned out. Motor light works. Warning light is supposed to come on when it comes toward the end of the wire. Although I have not done the slight the tweaking that is required of the contacts inside the cartridge to get the warning light to work. Level light is a neon, whereas the other lights are incandescent have not tried the overrun function but I imagine that just turns the motor on without if it's not being told to turn on otherwise and here's the cartridge I will show the removing oh, and 
the removing of the cartridge. So it's in lock position. There's a latch which still holds it. And then you can release. When you released, you can take the cartridge off. Here's the wire cartridge. I had to do some repairs on it. Um, one of the head wires had uh, the, the connection where it was crimped onto the um, terminal. The way it was done was just by crimping and, it, and the uh, terminal uh, crimp was supposed to have sharp edges that punctured into the insulation and made contact with the wire. It had, uh, had gone bad and so the head, or so the, it was reading as open circuit whenever I um, tested the contacts on the back of the head. But thankfully the head was still good. It was just that contact. I put a new wire connecting it to the head and now it is functional. I also had to do a couple of splices on the wire because a couple of times the wire did snap, unfortunately. Put that back on. Holding it into release position. Putting the cartridge in place, latch, and then pushing this in, locking it in place. Back in the mid-90s, our family acquired a personal computer running Windows 95. It was a very tall tower. And with it, we also acquired this power strip to hook up all the computer equipment to. Power strip still survives, and the power strip will be used to plug in this wire recorder. device has been turned on, although the power light's burned out. Rewind. Time delay is in operation. After the time delay, it'll begin rewinding. Playback. Amplifier is energized. Not only that, but the time delay also waits. Hello? Okay. Hello, this is Kevin Beauchene. I'm with Ricky Clyde today, and I'm looking over all his electronic stuff. Some of it used to be mine. And I'm glad I don't have it anymore. <laughs> it was taking up room. Actually, it was taking up my back porch, and my wife wasn't so happy, so I'm glad Ricky's got it. It makes my life a little bit happier. But I would like to say we were here testing this 1948 vintage wire recorder, and it's quite a machine. It's got transformers in it, capacitors in it, uh, Parts that I don't even know or what they're doing. But uh, I think it's a pretty cool machine, and uh, I think I'm uh, fortunate to, uh, to look at it. So, anyways, this is Lord's Day, and we thank him for all that he's done for us, and uh, what he will do for us, but mostly what he's already done. Anyways, uh, let's see what it sounds like. Take care, people. Keep in mind that this machine is running with all the original capacitors. A matter of fact, it is running with all the original electronics. The only repairs that were done was to put in a new wire into the head cartridge do a couple of splices after it after the wire snapped and repair the speaker and of course some lubrication on the mechanics all the other electronics aside from the burned out power light are good capacitors resistors it's incredible absolutely incredible 
It's a testament to the mill spec quality. This is not a consumer product by any stretch of the imagination. This is a military device intended for use by the military with very special specifications and build quality that was not used for consumer devices. So therefore it has lasted the test of time a lot better than a lot of other stuff does from the same time period. Most uh, electronic devices from the time this thing came out would at least need to have to have to have new capacitors for sure especially well, replacing both electrolytics and paper capacitors but this thing is still performing incredibly well which is remarkable to say the least watch the tubes warm up ain't that classic absolutely classic the old Jensen speaker. Gotta love it. These large boxes contain transformers. Again, another military spec way of doing it. Because typically the transformers were not, or on consumer products, it's not as common to find the transformers in metal cages or metal boxes like this. Here's the other side. You can see some more electron tubes and some of the wiring. Notice the uh, way the wiring is done as a harness where it's all um, it has little strings wrapped, wrapped around it to hold the wires in place. It's done very neatly. Common for middle spec devices. Point-to-point -point wiring in there. Common for devices of the time. Here's a top view Look at this beautiful array of how um, the components are mounted. Most point-to-point -point devices of the, uh, of the consumer variety just had all the resistors and capacitors just kind of going straight from a tube socket to another tube socket or to a little terminal piece or something like that as opposed to having all the components first mounted on a board like this and then from there the wires go from the components terminals on the board to the tube sockets in various places. Here's another good view of that old speaker. Shout out to Speaker Freak 95. Check it check that Jensen out. So now we're going to show a little bit more. Here's a back side you can see some information on these transformers. And I want to just say something plain here. This thing, and equipment like it, when it's turned on, do not touch the wiring inside. If it's been turned off, recently at least, do not touch the wiring inside because you're going to get voltages of 300 volts DC and it is not safe and it is very dangerous and potentially lethal to it, uh, to you if you get shocked by the high voltage. I have been shocked by this before while I was just trying to hook a microphone up one time. You know, on the terminals on the side with the uh, alligator clip leads. I touched uh, something else on the uh, carbon microphone input which had voltage on it. And, uh, and uh, anyway, although I survived, it's not advised that you just poke around these things if you don't know what you're doing. And um, anyway, we can see the uh, metal cages here for the, uh, or metal cases, not cages, for the transformers. Very well made device. Beautiful piece of equipment, to say the very least. Beautiful piece of equipment. It's incredible. Even these old capacitors. I thought when I got this, surely these capacitors would probably need to be replaced. Nope, still good. Here's a good front view of the. Uh, wire magazine as they call it. You can notice a little uh, needle pointing to uh, how much minutes time has been used on the wire right at the 30 minute mark. Good views of this beautiful machine to say the least. Very interesting device. 
when I spotted this thing on eBay, I I did what I could to get it. I did what I could. I did what I needed to get this device. I remember seeing this model wire recorder on a forum years ago, thinking not only was it exceedingly rare, but I wanted to get one. But I never thought I'd actually have the chance to get one like this. And once I found one on eBay, I'm like, oh my gosh, wow, okay. So check out the inside here. Oh my gosh, look at the way that thing is put together. It literally, this, this is art. I don't know about you, but this is art. I mean, this was designed by engineers, but I say engineers are also artists. When you design electronic devices, whether it's these days or the 1940s, either way, it's, it's art. As anyone in electronics knows, the printed circuit boards are uh, the layout for the printed circuit board design is literally referred to as artwork. That's how it's literally called in the field, like jargon-wise, artwork. Well, this may be not, this isn't a PCB. This is all point to point, but believe me, that is artwork. Sorry, I don't have the camera having it perfectly straight. <laughs> but that's beautiful. Look at that. That's beautiful. You look at the back of the, or the bottom of the metal can capacitors, the way these ones are mounted, they're screw on, negative going to the chassis and positive uh, in the middle. I'm not going to touch it because they may still have a charge on them of, you know, very high voltage in the hundreds of volts, which is very dangerous. You can see many mica capacitors are used too, and uh, mica capacitors tend to last well with age unlike paper capacitors do. So I really like the fact that they've used lots of mica capacitors. Actually, they didn't use very many of them, but when they did, they used mica capacitors. I don't see a single paper capacitor in here. Probably because with the mill spec, the people probably even knew back then that paper capacitors are not very good. Because consumer things that use paper capacitors when you, you when you want to restore them you need to replace the paper capacitors because they just don't last well but on this thing they avoided the use of paper capacitors altogether I've not spotted a single paper capacitor in this thing and you may have not been able to tell it as clearly in the video, but when I was playing back the sound from this thing, it was able to play back very loud. Usually, if you have an audio device and the filter capacitors are still good, but the audio capacitors, aka typically small value capacitors that aren't electrolytic in tube equipment, you might still get sound, but it won't be very loud. Now let's take a look down into the mechanical part of this machine. Of course, there's a beautiful wiring. You can notice this is a large plug. Look at that. Look at this big honking AC motor in there. Classic. Absolutely classic. Let me see if I can get a better shot. This is a very nice Royal Vac flashlight, which uses white LED technology. Notice the speaker. Okay. This is unplugged, by the way. Look at the uh, mechanism in there. All metal gears. No belts. There are a total of zero belts in this machine. Why are there zero belts? Because belts go bad and they're not as reliable as metal gears. That's right, metal gears, not to be confused with metal gear solid. 
although these are made of solid metal. You could say these gears are metal gear solid. You'll so notice this interesting uh, coil looking thing right here. It allows a little bit of a, it's kind of a spring kind of a thing. A little bit of play, I believe, between the position of the motor shaft and the gear shaft. So even if it's not exactly perfectly aligned, it still allows the mechanism to turn freely. And the metal gears are beautiful. So the supply side has a, has a large gear here. Actually the supply side you can see is directly driven by the motor. Motor drive down here goes to the supply side of the wire. Then there's a large gear and uh, the diameter of the gears keeps decreasing until it gets to the small one. Small ones to turn the excuse me, small one turns the supply. This is the take up. I knew it was the take up side but I was saying the wrong word. That's the take up right there. Take up is going to be running at a slower speed than the supply during rewind. If you rewind you want to run it fast so they got the big gear on the motor winding it down and getting us faster speed and um, then there's a mechanism with sol two solenoids which move this back and forth. Okay so here's a good view of the or a decent view I guess of the mechanical section of the wire recorder and you can see the main motor drive is right here and it directly drives the take up spool for the wire then you've got these two solenoids and this rocker arm so the current position right here is playback. This part has two cogs. Cog here on this side, a cog on the other, which engages in playback position. It engages the take up. I mean, yeah, the take up. And the take up is directly driven from the motor. Matter of fact, the cogs on this side don't even engage that part there but when you go into rewind this cog engages the motor drive side this cog up here engages makes contact with the supply side so that might be a brake system I'm not sure Then the gears, you got the large gear here, and you got progressively smaller diameter gears until you get to the small one here, which is going to be turning a lot faster, which goes to the supply reel to rewind. This entire mechanism is extremely reliable, using no belts at all. No rubber pieces for that matter. No rubber rollers, none of that. Just metal gears. A lot more reliable than belts and idler wheels and all that stuff. <laughs> so, by using no paper capacitors, by but only more reliable mica capacitors, by coating all the electronics with a certain material that shields it from the air to prevent it from corroding with time, and rusting and oxidizing you get a device that is extra tough and lasts very long and therefore you get a, a recorder that is just one year shy of being 70 years old that still works on almost a hundred percent original parts. That is nothing short of remarkable. I am recording music onto this machine.
see the neon light flicker according to the audio. I have it passing through an isolation transformer because I just feel safer doing it that way. Hooking it up to the computer and all. Here you can see on the inside of the case they actually put the schematic. Which is very nice to have. Okay, now to present how this recorded music. Be warned, frequency response is pitiful. Also to note, another thing I had to do actually when I, to, in, in my getting it to work originally was replace the power cord. Go. I command you to run now. As you can hear, that sounded bad. Now I'll demonstrate the erase feature. First position is rewind, second position, erase. The reason for the time delay is to make sure the wire has definitely come to a complete stop. And now, playback. You'll notice a section had got erased during playback. The downside of erase while rewind is the downside of erase while rewind is you don't know you don't always know what you're erasing, but you can see that it erased. That is the recorder reproducer unit presented to you by the cassette master on the 16th of December of 2017, a year that went by at an exceedingly high rate.